Uh, my name is Matt. It's great to be here tonight. Um, happy Advent to you all. Um, hands up if you've got an Advent calendar. Yes, great. Have you got more than one? You've got two up on the wall? Some people had like three this morning. I, I've in fact got three. Alex has got three kids and they, they can't sort of take it in turn, so they just have to have uh, three shared between them. So they all get to open something every day. Uh, tonight we're talking about uh, Advent. What is Advent? Uh, what does it mean to us? Why do we celebrate it? Uh, is it just the days before Christmas that we're sort of uh, counting down, or is there something a little bit deeper and more meaningful to it? So, um, before I get into that, I don't know whether you've um, opened your Spotify apps this week and had your Spotify 2022 wrapped. Anyone had that? Had that? Yeah. It's the sort of it's the way that Spotify gathers your data if you're a subscriber, uh, and they throw it all back to you, saying, uh, "This is the person you've listened to the most. This is the artist you've listened to the most. Uh, this is the song that you've listened to the most." And um, in our household, we've listened to everything from uh, Justin Bieber through to Edward Elgar. We, that's, that's how diverse and eclectic we are in our household. You can try and guess who listens to who. Um, but I wonder, separate to looking back at our Spotify playlist and our music tastes of 2022, um, I wonder what sort of year 2022 has been for you. What sort of year has it been? In my own life, I've sort of known great high joys and also quite deep and, and difficult lows. I've had, uh, we've had joy in our family with family news and pregnancy and new life. Uh, we've had uh, despair, haven't we, all together at world events, uh, looking around the world. Uh, we've, uh, my family has also seen, as well as joy and new life, had pain and illness and health issues. But then I've had personal celebrations of things gone well for me, things going well at work um, here, which is great. And, um, uh, but we've, we've lived with these great highs and these great lows this year. And I think we've also lived with this shared sense of real confusion about what's going on in the world. What's going, what is the direction this world is going in? What is the direction this country is going in? And uh, where is the stability that we long for? And it's now December. It's now Advent, and uh, we've got our Advent calendars up. But I wonder whether you've ever taken time to think about what Advent is. What are these 24 days that we live through in December? What do they mean? Interestingly, Advent is considered in the church sort of calendar around the world. Advent is considered the beginning of the year. The 1st of December, the first Sunday of Advent, is the beginning of the year. And as Christians, we celebrate this every, every year. And we celebrate it not just to remember Jesus coming at Christmas, the first time he came 2,000 years ago, but also looking ahead to what he says when he will come again, the second coming of Jesus. Advent is that sort of parallel, uh, looking back to, to remember his first coming and looking forward to his coming again. And the four Sundays of Advent, this is the second one, have four different themes. The themes are this, hope, peace, love, and joy. And we celebrate those um, themes throughout the whole of Advent. Now, I don't know what you're focused on at the moment in your life. If you were to think, uh, if you were to write a to-do list right now, maybe you've got one going, whether it's like a shopping list, uh, maybe you're trying to get work finished by the end of the year, financial reports, whatever they may be, uh, stressful arrangements about where you're going to be for Christmas, who you're going to be inviting, what do you do with awkward Granny Sue, uh, and oh, sorry if you're called Sue, and, um, and uh, there's all this stuff going on, isn't there, about wh what we need to do, uh, do we need to get all this in line before we can then relax and collapse in a heap on Christmas Day, having maybe eaten far too much. So I don't know what um, 2023 looks like for you either, whether you're thinking ahead with uh, fear or uh, excitement, whatever it may be, for, for 2023. But I want us to think tonight about these 24 days, actually now 21 days, uh, up until Christmas, not as a time of hurrying around, of busying around, of getting ready, doing all these things, ticking off all our to-do lists, getting exhausted uh, before Christmas, but maybe instead think of them in a countercultural way. Maybe, in fact, as a time of refreshment and a time of resetting and a time of re energizing. That we would maybe live counterculturally in these days of action packed 24 days, instead in a, in a place of hope and peace and joy and love. Themes that have been celebrated through Advent for 2,000 years. But those themes, hope, joy, peace, and love, probably are more needed and uh, 
craved after by our world now more than ever. So, Advent, let's dive into uh, Isaiah, which is in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 9. I'm going to read some words. They're going to come up on the screen. This is uh, in the middle of the Old Testament. This is Isaiah, who's a prophet, speaking to the people of God about a savior, uh, a rescuer, a messiah. And it says this, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors. Every warrior's battle used, every warrior's boots used in battle, and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So, tonight, I wonder, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Are you, like my wife, waiting for the post to come, expecting the next Amazon delivery, uh, leaving the door slightly open so the deliveries can come? Maybe you're waiting for a doctor's appointment or a test result. Maybe you're waiting to hear from friends or family. Maybe you're waiting to see, uh, hear from a, a job interview, what the next job might look like. Who, you might even be waiting for who you, you are going to marry. You might be waiting to see what happens on the world stage and in the government. You might be waiting to see whether England will ever win the World Cup. We'll find out more later on. (laughs) Waiting for whatever we're waiting for can be hard. It takes patience, and it can take up our energy. And I think we can have a choice about how we wait. I think on one hand, we can wait in fear. We can wait uh, uh, with anxiety even, or impatience. Secondly, I think we can choose to wait with hope. And I think when we live in hope, we acknowledge that whatever's going on in this moment can change. Whatever's the situation that we're living with can change. Hope is this glorious anticipation of what is yet to come. But what I think happens with us, if we're people of faith, is that we uh, make the thing that we're waiting for, the job or the situation or the illness, we, we make that a sort of precondition to getting on with our life of faith. We can say, God, if, if we just sort this out, if you could just sort out my situation, my job, or this situation, once that's sorted, then I'll get my faith on track. But I need this sorted first. And we can, I, I'm, I'm as guilty of it as, as anyone else. We, we make a precondition to say, I can't do this because I'm waiting for this to happen. But the kingdom of God, the kingdom that Jesus brought here on earth, doesn't have us it need us to, to have our lives sorted. It doesn't need us to have everything worked out and our life on track. God comes to us as we are in the situations that we are going through. So instead of waiting in fear and anxiety, we can wait in hope. We can wait in hope. There's um, a Christmas carol called O Little Town of Bethlehem. It's one of my favorites. Um, And it finishes, one of the lines, uh, one of the verses finishes with this line, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Advent waiting is hopeful waiting. Advent waiting is expectant waiting that things will and can change. Advent waiting requires us to make space in our lives for God. None of us can control our futures, not even the next minute or the next hour. But Advent is this season that reminds us that our hopes and our fears are met in the person of Jesus. So, the question for you tonight, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting in hope and not in fear? And tonight you can know that whatever uh, fears you have ahead of you, Jesus meets us with a message of hope. Let's just dive a little bit more into that Old Testament, the context that Isaiah was uh, speaking into. And uh, 
in this, in this time, uh, Isaiah was writing, the people of God were in exile, which meant they were far from home. They were not where they were supposed to be. And they were often not doing what God had told them to do. They were a disobedient people. They went away and they came back to God and they repented and they disobeyed again. And that cycle went round and round and round again. And what you get in the whole of the Old Testament is this sense of waiting, waiting for a rescuer, waiting for someone to save them, waiting for uh, this person called the Messiah, which was the Savior. And in their waiting, from their perspective, it says quite a lot uh, that, that God is silent. From their perspective, God wasn't uh, doing and speaking to them in the way that which they would have hoped and there is a gap between the end of the Old Testament, at the end of Malachi, and the beginning of the New Testament of 400 years. You don't think of it when you just turn a page, but that was from the end of the Old Testament to the beginning of the New Testament, 400 years of silence where God was seemingly not speaking to them, not leading them, not directing them. And suddenly the New Testament, the beginning of Matthew, picks up uh, at the end of this 400 years silence of waiting but the landscape for the people of God had changed massively. They were now a people of God in Israel under, under Roman occupation. Uh, they were a people oppressed, seeking liberation, seeking freedom from their oppressors. And suddenly, at the end of uh, the, uh, sort of the beginning of the New Testament, after such a long silence, God is on the move again. And this is the beginning. This is the, the Christmas story that we read of at the start of Matthew and Luke and John. And it shows us this amazing uh, moment of people waiting for God to move and speak. We see Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, and Zechariah who've waited for a baby. And Elizabeth is given a child in her old age, having been barren for many, many years. We see Mary and Joseph uh, given a child, the one who's going to be called Holy, the Savior, God with us. Simeon and Anna, who are people in the temple, uh, who are waiting for that Messiah, waiting for that Savior and Deliverer, suddenly recognizing Jesus as that person. And then we look at the, the kings, who, uh, the magi, who are given this sign, this star, to say, go and find this king. Each one of these people that we see waiting for Jesus are guided by God in different ways, by angels, by dreams, by the scriptures, to the person of God, the one who is called Emmanuel, God with us, God as one of us. And what unites all of these characters, what unites all these people is that they paid attention to God through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Each one of these biblical characters embraced the moment and waited patiently for God's action. So I wonder whether we might change that phrase tonight, what are you waiting for, into this, who are you waiting for? Who are you waiting for? You see, in Advent, this time, we're not waiting for an event to happen. In Advent, we wait for a person, the person of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, who has come to us 2,000 years ago and who will come again to make right this broken and uh, painful earth who will come again to restore heaven and earth to full glory. And when we realize this, when we realize this, uh, the God's dream of unity and wholeness for the universe is being worked out now. Jesus came to bring his kingdom to earth, and it is still uh, piece by piece advancing. The kingdom of God has come, and it is coming, and it will come in fullness and completion when he comes again. And this changes how we think how we interact, how we live our lives right here, right now, today. Because I think this sense of waiting and longing and waiting in hope gives us real uh, purpose and meaning in our lives. We are part of God's mission and kingdom today. That's what, was, what we were doing yesterday as part of Love Bristol, bringing God's kingdom on earth in Bristol today, showing the people of Bristol the love of God through the person of Jesus, that they are seen and known and loved and cared for. But how do we do all this, you might say, in a world that is fighting for our attention, that world that is bombarding us with um, 
I don't know, distracting adverts or buy this now, buy that now, do this now, do that now. This holiday season, I think, these 24 days can uh, just confuse us with, I I don't know where to go, I don't know what to do. We succumb to uh, maybe socializing more than we want to, buying more than we want to, uh, eating more than we want to, whatever it may be. And none of these things are bad. Gifts are great. If you love gifts, I love a little gift. Um, That's fine. Well, you don't have to buy me one. (laughs) You might like a party. A party is absolutely fine. But all these things, they're designed to uh, represent the celebration of the season, but they can distort if we focus on them too much, if, we, uh, if our attention is captivated away from the person of Jesus. And I love another carol um, called It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. I'm not going to quote too many carols, just to these two tonight. Um, it Came Upon a Midnight Clear. It's one of the more obscure carols, and it has this amazing line halfway through. It says this, Oh, hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear the angels' song. It applies to women as well. Oh, oh hush the noise, ye men and women of strife, Ye people of strife, and hear the angels' song. I wonder if this Advent, we are, um, God is calling us to spend some time in quiet, to be aware of the Holy Spirit's prompting in your life. And maybe each day, you might just spend some time saying, God, I want to be aware of you. I want to wait, not in fear, not in anxiety, but I want to wait in faith, and I want to wait in hope. Because I know you've come, and I know you will come again. I know you are living and active, and you long to bring good things to me. Um, One of my mentors when I was younger told me to pray a three-word prayer that stuck with me since, well, since he taught me. And uh, he, he said to pray these words, what today, God? Which is basically saying, God, I don't know what to do. Would you show me what to do. I don't know what to say. Would you show me what to say? I don't know. I'm open, God, to your prompting now. What today, God? And maybe in this season of Advent, you just might like to say, God, what today? Would you fill me with your strength because I'm feeling weak? Would you fill me with your hope because I'm feeling hopeless? Would you fill me with a sense of peace because I'm so restless? Whatever it may be, those themes of hope, peace, joy, and love God promises to us today. And Advent, I think, is a time where we can seek the holy to break into the daily. We can seek the holiness of God to break into our daily lives each and every day. What today, God, you might say. Finally then, let's come back at just that question on the screen. What are you waiting for? Now, I've got three kids, and um, sometimes when it's time to go out of the house and leave the house, uh, it can be hard to get them ready. Uh, it can be hard to get them motivated, get their shoes on. So I say, come on, what are you waiting for? In this sort of like frustrated cry of uh, parenthood. And um, maybe you've had that uh, shouted over you in the past, or maybe you'll sort of have that frustrated thing. Come on, what are you waiting for? You're such a slow coach. And um, uh, I believe that God's invitation to us is not like a frustrated, nagging parents, but it's an invitation of love to us. It's an invitation that just says, what are you waiting for? Come on. Because I think in this Advent season, as we wait for Jesus, the more we wait, the more we realize that Jesus is actually waiting for us. Jesus is waiting for you. It might be that you're here and you're saying, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you, God. I'm waiting for you, God. But actually, I think the more we wait, the more we realize that Jesus has come and he is waiting for you. So perhaps over the next two, three weeks, three weeks to Christmas, you might just say to God, God, I'm open to you. I want to discover more of you because Jesus is waiting for you. If you look at the stories of, in, in the um, Christmas story, you see the shepherds who are sent to Bethlehem by the angels. And they, as they arrive to the manger, Jesus is waiting for them. Jesus is there. They've come to find Jesus. Jesus is waiting for them. The kings who travel miles and miles and miles, they don't know who on earth they're going to see. They don't know who on earth they're, they're going to meet. But as they get there, Jesus is there waiting for them. Jesus is waiting. And then you look towards the end of the Gospels, 
You look at Mary, who is sent to the empty tomb. Jesus is reported as being risen from the dead. Mary hurries to the tomb, searching for Jesus. And when she gets there, Jesus is waiting for Mary. Jesus has come. He says, I am here, God with us, Emmanuel, and I am waiting for you. Then you fast forward right to the end of the Bible. Revelation 3, chapter, uh, Revelation 3, 20, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they will eat with me. The miracle of Christmas is that we know that God is with us. And this season of Advent reminds us that in our waiting and in our working it all out, that actually God is waiting for us. God is saying to you and me tonight that he is here. He is waiting for you. I started the, the talk tonight with that Spotify rap thing, what, what your year has looked like, a summary of your year. And whatever your year has looked like, whatever highs and lows, hopes and fears, joys and sorrows have happened, this Advent, I believe that Jesus is saying to you, what are you waiting for? Because I am waiting for you. So this Advent, let's wake up. Let's show up. Let's step forward in our faith. And as we wait for him, God with us, the Prince of Peace, we, I think, will realize that he is waiting for us. Amen. Let's pray.